Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to the final lesson in robotics for this semester. Today's lesson will be the Arduino keypad door lock project. And in this lesson we'll learn how the keypad works, use the character variable in arrays and create a password for your project. So the project will be create is creating a door lock using the keypad. So the lock will be controlled with a servo motor. We will have LEDs for indications for the password if correct or wrong. And we will use the keypad to create the password and enter the password. And as you can see, this is the keypad. And this is a 4x4 four four keypad. It means it has 4 rows and 4 columns. So what we need to achieve is, if the password is correct, we need to move the servo motor to open the lock, turn the LED to green, and display correct on the serial monitor. If the password is wrong, turn the LED red, display the word wrong on the serial monitor. For this project, you will use a servo motor with the Arduino Uno and the keypad. And as we can see here, when the servo motor rotates, it will push the pen to push the lock, creating a door lock. And now the keypad. What is the keypad? The keypad basically is a small keyboard with push buttons connected in rows and columns. So you have the push buttons inside each of these squares connected in rows and columns. And the main advantage here is that we have those push buttons already built into the keypad. So we have four rows, R1, 2, 3, 4, and four columns, column 1, 2, 3, 4. And as we can see, we have eight cables, eight wires coming out of the 4x4, four four, which is a 16 push button keypad. So you have 16 keys connected with only 8 wires. Let's see how it works on the inside. So the keypad, basically, this is the keypad that we have, and this is the configuration on the inside. We have rows and columns. So we have rows on the inside connected with push buttons through the columns. So if we have row 1, for example, is connected to all of these push buttons, and the push buttons are connected to all of the column lines. But they're not completely connected. You have to push on the push button so you can make the connection. So let's take, for example, row 2. Row 2 is connected to all of these push buttons all the way from the first one to the last one through these cables in the middle. Now, if we connect column 1 with row 2, the intersection will be the last one in the second row which will be number four in this case. Another example is if we connect row one with C4. So if we push on this push button, it will connect row one with C4, leaving the others not connected. In this case, this will be the first one on the right top, which is A. And last one, if we connect R4 with C2, you can guess it, it's easy. Just follow the line all to the end, and then follow the column all to the end, and it will be uh, connected in the middle. So the intersection of this one, it's going to be either this push button or this push button. But because we are following the connection of the row with the column, it will be the closest to the intersection between the row and the column. So it has to be the right one, this one and not this one, because this one is not connected to anything on this side. So follow the row, and then to the column, and the one in between will be the push button. So in this case, R4 and C2, which is row number 4 and column number 2, will give us, if you look at the keypad, it will be 0. It will be the button 0. So connecting 16 push buttons through only 8 wires, 4 rows, and four column wires. 
and these are the wires that will be coming out at the end of the keypad as you can see one two three four for the rows five six seven eight for the columns and all we need to do is to connect these to the Arduino and the good thing is we can use the keypad because it uses less digital pins as you know the Arduino Uno only have 13 digital pins inputs and the keypad will have 16 push buttons and if we connect normal push buttons we will not have enough inputs for the Arduino so the keypad is very useful in that case that we can connect 16 buttons with only 8 wires which will be enough in this case so less wiring and thus less work which is easier to connect and the keypad is very easy to mount as we can see here look at the keypad you just mount this into the breadboard and then take the connections out to the Arduino the first four and then the second four just connected through eight digital pins now let's get to the work I have here the Tinkercad open with the connection already wired except for the keypad and all we need to do is to connect the keypad to the Arduino so I have connected wires from two to five these will be for the columns and these will be for the rows so if you look at the keypad it will say column four three two one and then row four row three row two row one so if we just put this here it's going to be connected just move this to check it's connected and now we have all of them connected on this, on this line and as we know on the breadboard these lines are connected so column 4 is going to 2 column 3 is going to 3 column 2 is going to 4 and so on you can follow the lines this one is row 4 starting at 6 and then row 3 at 7 row 2 at 8 and then row 1 at 9 so just remember these numbers 6, 7, 8, 9 is the rows and 2, 3, 4, 5 is for the columns. Next to that on 10 and 11 I've connected two LEDs so the red one is on 10 the green one is on 11 through the resistors of course to protect the LEDs and the resistor as you know as we learned in every lesson it's 220 ohms make sure you get that right and finally on pin number 12 I've connected the signal output for the servo motor to move the other two cables as you see and as you know is for the power and ground very simple configuration it looks like it's complicated but it's not so now we need to get to the coding so if we start the simulation just click on start the simulation we can see that the LED is red and then now the door is locked it's locking the door and now we need to put the password for the door to open so if I click on any of the buttons just randomly nothing will happen because the password is wrong now for simplicity I just made the password is just one character which is D I'm just gonna give it the D and it should open if I click on anything else it doesn't open I click on D it turns green and the door is open and that's it if you stop the simulation start, start the simulation again it will lock the door and then it wait for me to enter the password if I enter the password incorrectly it will not do anything if I click on the D it should open now just open the serial monitor let me clear it All right. Now that it's clear, I'm clicking, nothing is happening, and once I click on the D, it will show me D, and then it will go green, and will open the door by opening the motor. What I want you to do is to change the D into something else. It should write correct password. If it's wrong password, if it's something else, if it's wrong password, 
it should be it should say wrong password so, so that is something I'm going to leave to you okay let's jump into the code so let's see the code at the beginning we have to identify the libraries so just like the servo library that will control the servo we can use the keypad library which will control the keypad so we'll use include servo.h and include keypad.h make sure it's a capital key and then we define the variables we need LED red connected to pin number 10 you can check on it here pin 10 and we have the green LED connected to pin number 11 the LED green equal 11 we need one servo motor from the type servo I will name it servo 1 you can name it anything you want and we need a password it's going to be of the type character because the keys are characters every keyboard is a character so I will call it password and I will put inside of it the D you can choose any other key if you want and then we need to define the matrix this is the new part don't worry it looks kinda kinda scary but it's very easy just follow, follow the steps easily I will give some space just to make things clear now we have character type I will call it key map and I will put inside of it two different arrays remember this bracket is for the arrays so I will put two different arrays one for the columns and the other one for the rows so we have four columns and four rows and to identify the key pad I will create the curly brackets so you open with a curly bracket and then you close with a curly bracket so this is the beginning of the keypad and the end of the keypad so this is the beginning of the keypad and then you create the four different rows every row needs to be inside these curly brackets so you open a curly bracket you put the first character I'm using quotation to tell the Arduino it's a character and then a comma for the next character because I'm moving to the next one number two is a character because I put these quotations and then comma third one comma fourth one one two three a one two three a and then the same thing for the next row but make sure you put the comma between the rows so the Arduino can know that you have moved to a new row otherwise it will think that all of them are connected together on one line so this comma is to tell the Arduino that we are moving to a new line a new row so this is row number two four five six B row and then comma four number uh, row number three comma and then row number four and there is no comma because we are done with the keypad we don't have any more lines so what do we do instead of the comma we put the curly bracket and then we close it with the semicolon very easy so again it's a character type because I put characters inside of it I called it key map you can call it anything you want it's made of four rows and four columns so this one is for the rows this one is for the columns equal to beginning of the keypad and ending of the keypad and the four rows in between now to the next variables I need to assign I need to assign the row arrays and the column arrays for the pins so I'll create the new array called row pins it has four pins six seven eight and nine just like we agreed here as you can see six seven eight and nine are connected to rows so row pins are six seven eight and nine and then column pins will be two three four five column pins two three four five 
and the data type of the array inside the array I will call it a byte so byte is the new thing I will tell you about a byte basically is four bits because every pin will take a bit and the bit will either be zero or one because inside the keypad these are push buttons so if the push button is on it will be one if the push button is low it will be zero and you can tell from this picture so this is one byte and a byte is made of eight bits those are the eight bits every bit is connected to one of the pins so basically this is on our connection and con configuration we have connected two three four five six seven eight nine so these are can be two three four five six seven eight nine two three four five six seven eight nine Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the byte is basically made of eight bits. Every bit can either have zero or one. If these are connected to the push buttons, every push button will give either zero or one. If all the push buttons are zeros, then there is no input. If only the one connected to the D is is on, if I click on the D, if I click on the D, it will be activated, and then this one will be activated and it will become a one. So this is basically what a byte is. So a byte has eight bits. In the code, as you can see, I said here, byte, it means give me a byte, name it row pins, and choose four, only four things. So it would choose these four, the first four. And then I will put inside these four the number of the pins. So I've reserved all of these four. And then column pins, also four of the byte. So it will take the next four, five, four, three, two. And finally, we will do the mapping. So we have the pins and we have the keypad. It's called key map. And we have the pins, row pins and column pins. And now we need to connect them together. So I will say keypad using the library keypad. I will say keypad. I will name it keypad1. This is the name of the keypad, so I'll name it keypad underscore one. This is the name of my keypad. And it will equal to the keypad I have will make a key map. This is the key map. So take this and map it into the row pins and the column pins four by four. So this function, it will take a four by four matrix, four by four arrays, and it will connect them to the column pins with the row pins. And those will be part of the key map. This is the key map. So this function will take the 4x4 key map and connect to the 8 pins, 4 for the column and 4 for the row. And will store all of this information inside this variable keypad1. And now let's come to the program after all these definitions. So for the setup, as you know, we will use the serial.begin for the serial monitor. This is the serial monitor that we'll use. And then servo1, which our servo attached to 12 because it's attached to number 12, pin number 12. And then pin mode for the LED is output. Pin mode for the LED is output as well. Now for the void loop, we will create a character called pressed it will check what is pressed on the keypad. So this is the keypad. And every time you click something, it will use the function get key. So get key will take something from the keypad and send it to the Arduino. So get key from the keypad one, this is keypad one, 
and will store it will store it it will save it inside this variable pressed and this variable will have inside of it of course a character because all of these are characters so if you click on character a get key from keypad one and save it here and I'll check if pressed is equal to the password do this else do that and this is the end of the void loop so if it's pressed and it's equal to the password we have the password here is D so if it's equal to D server will move 180 degrees the serial.print will print the password digital right LED red will be low and then the green LED will be high and then delay 1000 milliseconds which is one second to give some time for the servo motor to move else otherwise the red will be high and the green will be low let's test that click on simulation and now let's see